this is where it stands out. I mean, you can try this with your ear too. Let me know what happens. You're gonna need the S for this nightlife. Ear 2S, baby. Strap up, get your notebook, cup of coffee, whatever you need, cause it's about to get real. Come with me. <laughs> Now you're probably wondering, X, why are you putting the filter on in the night? Well, hold up. Just put the ND16 on. We'll talk about it, okay? Just trust me. Put an ND16 on. As a matter of fact, you can even go darker. And I'll show you at the end of the video. But you gotta stick around, see the whole thing unfold. Let's put on our light. Three nautical miles. Ooh, this light's bright. Oh, not rolling without a smart controller. We're up in the air now. I know what you're saying. It's pitch black dark. Why'd you put a dark filter on? Let's switch to photo mode. Look, it comes alive in photo mode. Look at that. Now you can see it, right? So you see this with all the cars moving, the highway there. It's going to come out beautiful. So first things first, let's tap the little icon above the shutter button there. Let's go to hyperlapse. Now, we're doing waypoint hyperlapses. Why? Because you can do day, you can film it in the day and then come back and do it at night. The first battery I recommend you use just to mark your waypoint. So when you're doing hyperlapses, you want at least a fly more combo. Good. So we select waypoints for hyperlapse. Now you've got to come at the bottom where the camera is, right? And take it off of auto. See the bottom right says auto. No, auto is not going to cut it. We got to go to manual or pro we call it pro mode now pro mode right so jump into pro mode in pro mode set your ISO to 1600 ISO must be at 1600 not 3200 not 800 1600 is your ISO settings your shutter right now my shutter is at three seconds you can do three seconds but that's pretty long let's go for two seconds we're gonna start off in two seconds and i'll show you the difference at the end when you go with one second two second three seconds and how it affects your hyperlapse but let's just get this done okay so we're gonna go to two seconds there you go two seconds on the shutter please yeah this is a hyperlapse so we get iso uh, 1600 shutters two seconds and your white balance, my white balance is 5300. You can set your white balance to whatever you want. Just remember one thing, that when you slide the white balance to the right, it gets warm. And when you slide it to the left, it gets cool or blue. So it all depends on what you're looking for, right? Most people like to fly white balance in the night on the cool side instead of the warm side, which is around 42, 4400. So we'll go 46, 4500. Play with it, see which one you like. It's just the coolness and the warmness, whatever floats your boat, rock with it. Now, in terms of format for photos, you have got to set it to 4K RAW. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? You want to do something that you can share quickly and easily. Why not drop it into 1080, right? Why not put it in JPEG, right? Something that you can share easily. But here's the advantage. Put it on 4K and put it on RAW. Why? It will still output that 1080 quick, cool looking video that you can share. But you will also have the 4K RAW files in case you decide to step your game up later. You don't have to come and fly it back. The files will be on the drone, on the SD card. You can pull it off of there as you get better at hyperlapses and you want to advance yourself. And you can save it on your computer some, somewhere until you're ready to go to that next level. That's about it for the settings. Your camera is all set up. Now these settings will only work if you're somewhere that's bright like where I am, right? Even with an ND16 filter on, you can still see the cars moving. That's how bright it is. It's just that the filter's kind of dumbing it down, okay? And you want some hyperlapse in your life? So now you want to mark your points. So it says set waypoints. You can, you can click on it and then just hit the plus to add the points. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you wanna do a day to night hyperlapse and I'll do a tutorial if you guys want, just hit up the comment section and I'll show you. But if you're going to do a day to night hyperlapse, you want as many points as possible. And that's because as you travel from the day, 
into the night you must have a lot of photos to run through a long distance to travel but tonight we're just doing a night waypoint hyperlapse so we're only gonna take a few points now um, let me start from back here somewhere I'll just run back over here turn around my height is 141 feet I've been here in the day I know there's nothing that I can hit here in the day nothing that can bother me in the day so I am quite fine I have got 60% battery but I'm not worried about it I'm just using this battery to mark the points good here's my first point now what am I looking for I'm looking for a little bit of the train see there's like a train yard over there right but I also set my gimbal before I take the first point I don't want all of this sky right it's gonna look a little grainy it's not gonna look nice let's focus on the train but at the set time I don't want to come down too much and cut the buildings out so I've got to raise it up so I get the buildings in the background and just a tad bit of the sky right so you want to set your gimbal before you even mark the first point here we go this is a nice point now you see how I'm flying around I'm not worried about hitting anything because I've been here in the day before look at that so now I got a little bit of the train in the right and I've got the road which is my primary I look around you can see I'm cutting a little bit of the buildings up let's raise up a little bit all right we got the camera angle set we got the buildings in there we've got everything we've got part of the train to the right we've got the road we've got everything hit that plus there you go so let's fly up a little bit to where we want the second point I want the second point like here past the train as soon as we pass the train we're coming closer to the highway let's make that the second point hit the plus bang that's our second point now you don't want to do anything crazy like this you don't want to rotate like this for the second point you don't want to rotate like this for the second point unless the distance between the two points are very spaced out apart because if the points are close like you're moving from here to here between your first point and the camera has to and the drone has to fly right from here to there and then turn all the way like this it's going to be too much movement and then your hyperlapse is going to look rough and herky jerky so let's try and keep the angles nice and just slight movements if you have to slight to the right or slight to the left but try to keep those movements as finite as possible also with the gimbal avoid putting the gimbal up and down as you go through points because as you move from point to point if your points are too close to each other and your gimbal has to move dramatically it's going to be too much movement and it's going to destroy your hyperlapse we can always experiment later and get it better as time goes on but for now we want to keep it simple so here we go right as you can see it's showing the camera rotation angle it says good 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 we don't want to rotate too much see look at that too small look at that good right so we want it see it guides you right follow that it says good too small bang how about that angle okay we'll hold it right there that's a good angle right so let's keep going let's keep going to our third point or third point now you see I'm gonna kind of want to wrap around I want to wrap around this highway a little bit and catch this point here this is gonna be my hot point look at this there's a lot of traffic moving over here I got the buildings in the background this is going to look awesome you see my camera rotation angle says good when it says good you're good all right and you see I still have a move my gimbal one keep it nice and simple so that's my third point now let's wrap around over here turn the corner go around as so I can see the drone with the lights nice now you see that I'm down now I'm moving right and I'm changing my camera angle look at that good 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 says good right but as you move away then further away then you can change your angle so look how far I am now right but I want to go far away as possible let's go far away right far away to the edge over here yep still see the edge over there turn around to where it says camera angle good now how about that how about that now that's Krispy Kreme it says the angle is good let's mark that as our fourth point there you go now it's giving us a warning that the battery life cannot at 34 percent 
knock all four of these points that's fine because here's what we're gonna do right where it says camera rotation angle there's a little file there at the top left hit that little file and we're going to save it hit the little pen button right there and let's name it there you go hyperlapse YouTube and hit save bang all of our points are saved so let's fly back there I am see that light on the ground that's my landing point. Nice and clean and clear. See it right there. Just need to come down. There we go. That's why you need your home point to be lit up, right? If you didn't get a chance to fly in the day and you're only getting a chance to fly at night, go up without the ND filter, mark all the points so you can see better without the filter, and then when you come down back to put a fresh battery to actually go and fly it, then you can pop the filter on. So there's one pro tip for you. Great, let's swap this battery and head back up. We're back up in the air with 95%. We wanna make this as quick as possible. Go back to Hyperlapse, bam, click on your hyperlapse. Waypoints, it is waypoints hyperlapse that we are looking for. Click on the drop down menu, click the file over there, YouTube hyperlapse, that is what we're loading. Now we have our points. Now, I would say, just as a recommendation, right, our last point was somewhere up here. Right, it was somewhere towards the end of the highway over here. Not the end of the highway, but it was pointing towards the highway and flying back. If you only have one battery and you don't have the fly more combo, then I would suggest that right wherever you are at the last point, then what you do is hit the three dots at the bottom right over there. And instead of going a normal sequence, right, which is from your first point to your last point, switch it to reverse and that way when you're at your last point it'll fly back and start the hyperlapse and that will save you some battery let's go back double check our camera settings iso 1600 two inch uh, shutter speed that's pro mode of course white balance 4600 let's select intervals we want uh four seconds that means every four seconds it will take a picture let's click on that we've got four seconds and how long do you want the video to last? I usually like 10 seconds. I feel like 10 seconds is the way to go for any kind of hyperlapse. And then just hit the little red shutter button and it will do the rest for you, right? I click reverse because I just feel like not only um, will it save battery life if you're out there already, but I just feel like, I feel like it looks better in reverse for this shot, so. You know, the beauty is you can do it forward and backward. DJI's got some really simple, intuitive programming going on here, and you just gotta take advantage of it, guys. Now, I will say one thing. Because of this one-inch sensor, this powerful sensor that's on this drone, I feel like this thing is a gas guzzler. I don't know if it's, it's the camera alone or it's the camera with the extra sensors that's really drawing the power from this battery. So I would not push this as far or as hard as I would push the Air 2, but you know, there's a trade-off for getting a better camera and a little bit more sensing with the, or from the same battery, I should say, right? Um, you know, it would've been nicer if they used a bigger battery, but hey, just stock up on batteries, guys, and you know, fly one to market points and fly another one to actually do the hyperlapse. Hyperlapse is complete. Let's bring her in and uh, take a look at the final product. The 1080p version, all right? Let's take a look and then we'll talk some tips after. First, you go under the little shutter button where it says play. Hit that play, man, you are one hot noisy drone. There it is, it's 10 seconds on the dot. Click on it and it will transfer from the drone to your controller. I'm gonna put this outside, too noisy while it downloads. There we go, almost done. Come on, download. <laughs> It does take some time. Oh boy, oh boy. And the moment of truth. Just hit play and you can view it. Oh my gosh, look at those streaks of mwah, beauty. Streaks of mwah, beauty. 
Now, if I was smart, I would have kept it facing the highway all the time, but I went for some of the train. As you can see, I'll play back one more time. This was beautiful. This part's all beautiful. I like this part. Can I pause it? No, you can't pause it. But right here, I opted for the train. I should have faced more of the highway, but guess what? It is what it is. I can do this again. At the bottom right, there's a little scissors button. Just hit that little scissors right there. Now I can edit it. Just hit the music button at the bottom there and add in music, right? Select the music that you want. Tap to add music. There we go. I'll pick anything, any kind of song at this point. On my way home it is. There you go. Now we've got music. You can trim your music and there's a whole bunch of stuff. I covered all of that here where you can learn to edit on the DJI Fly app on the go for your 1080p images. And don't forget, you've got the 4K on that drone. So in case you want to take your hyperlapse to even another level and have it look like this. <music> If you guys want a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments section below. Once you're finished, you just hit done. You have a choice between 720 and 1080p. Of course, if you want that 4K, you've got to do it on your computer. And just hit continue to export. That's it. You could share it with your family and friends. Remember I was telling you earlier, stick around to the end. Check this out. Let's jump over to my computer over here. I have a hyperlapse with no filter. The second one is with an ND8, the third one is with the ND16, and the fourth one is with an ND32. This is what it looks like with no filter. Now what's important, it doesn't look bad, but as you can make out the cars on the road over here, see, you can make out the cars. Look, at the end, when it reaches the end, you can see the car light, you can see the car, the image and everything. That's with no filter. Next, we have an ND8. Now look at the ND8. You're seeing the cars are not as quite distinct and clear. You're starting to see the cars look like streaks. See? The cars are looking like streaks. And look what happens at the end. Look what happens at the end. You see? Look at the cars now at the end. You're not making out the cars clearly. You're starting to see streaks. Look on the other side with the cars going the other direction where my mouse is. You can barely see streaks of the car, right? That's with the ND8. Now let's ramp it up to the ND16, which I was telling you to put on. The ND16, now the streaks are a lot longer on both sides. Look, it's finished here. You can see the red streaks on the right side with the cars going, and you can see the long white streaks with the cars coming much more of a dramatic effect, right? So now remember, every time you change the filter, you have to change the settings, right? If you guys wanna see the settings that I use for each different filter, hit me up in the comment section and I'll definitely let you know what filters, what settings to use for each particular filter. Now, after the ND16, we have the ND32. Yes, I did it with the ND32. Now look at those streaks. Those streaks are massively, massively long. Look at those streaks now, look. You can see both sides, the red on the right side, and look at these extra long streaks. So it gives you even more of a dramatic effect. And that's what I want you to see. Guys, there's so much you can do with this hyperlapse over here. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Smash that like, smash that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe. Tell others about me. I'm out here putting in work in the night for you guys so you can have some hyperlapse in your life. I'm loving this little bad boy tons of tutorials coming for this if you guys subscribe be vocal in that comment section let me know that you guys want this stuff and um i will catch you guys in the next one make sure you become a patreon guys big benefits to patreon get direct access to me any questions i'm right here on patreon support this channel and there's benefits last mini two went all the way to the uk